Welcome to Ask Will, where we have no subscribers as we're a new channel. So please remember to like and subscribe um, if you like what you see today. Uh, today I'm answering the question, should I learn COBOL? So to give you a little background on myself, I graduated from Louisiana State University in 2002. Uh, while I was there, part of the time I was there, I was the Departmental Computer Science Tutor. So that meant I covered all sorts of languages from Fortran and COBOL, C, Perl, you name it, right? Um, very shortly after I graduated, or right before really, the dot-com bubble occurred, 2001. And um, around 2002, I had a couple different opportunities, one of which uh, was working at a contract job for Fortran. It was a pretty good offer. It was three, three months and $250 an hour. And to give you a perspective on what $250 in 2002 means in today's language, you can easily go to a cost of living calculator and see that uh, $250 in 2002 is actually about $359 in 2020. So when I heard that there was a desperate need for COBOL programmers, I perked up. Thought well, maybe I made the right decision a few years ago, or maybe I didn't make the right decision to go. So let's look at COBOL, see if there's a good opportunity or two out there. Maybe I should help out. So I see articles like IBM scrambles to find or train more COBOL programmers to help states. IBM offers COBOL help for government to deal with the crisis. U.S. states desperate for COBOL programmers. IBM is offering free training. So when you hear words like scrambles and crisis and desperate, yeah, well, it's pretty reasonable to think there's some decent paying jobs out there if they if they are going to look for someone that's going to do COBOL programming, right? So I head off immediately to Indeed.com, right? And on Indeed.com, they all have their own little ways of searching. It's best to put in a language and maybe go by um, what you're looking for um, and maybe a, a base salary, right? In this case, I used 150 grand all across the United States. So I was a little surprised to see there was a total of nine jobs when I looked. And it's even more fun when you go down, right? So as a US network programmer, it's more of a mainframe programmer, not specifically COBOL. Um, a CICS systems administrator, and not exactly a COBOL programmer. I mean, these are $75 an hour in New York and New Jersey, where that money's not exactly going to go as far as it does in Houston, Texas. The first actual programming job we get is a mainframe systems programmer job out of Honolulu, Hawaii for $85 to $99 an hour. Again, cost of living in Hawaii is probably a little bit higher than Houston, Texas, but let's look a little closer at this one. So mainframe systems program required 10 years, and they want an experienced IBM mainframe systems programmer with a minimum of 15 years as a systems programmer with experience in planning, installation, upgrade, etc. So what this tells me is that they're looking for someone that's a minimum of 37 years old because the average graduate in the United States is 22 when they graduate college. At another 15 years, you're looking at a minimum of age 37. Kind of odd that they're asking for someone who's got 15 years of experience when they're desperately in need of COBOL programmers. And you can keep going down through Indeed.com and see that there's a senior engineering architect, which isn't really a COBOL programming job, DBA, technical director, software architect, right? Lead cybersecurity architect, systems architect. Again, these are not COBOL programming jobs. They're good jobs, don't get me wrong, but they're not COBOL programming jobs, and that's probably not the focus of these jobs. So maybe it's just Indeed, right? Maybe there's other jobs elsewhere. Let's let's take a look at a few other websites that you might be familiar with. Well, Glassdoor.com, right? Glassdoor.com uh, should have something better than what Indeed does, right? So let's go with COBOL and Glassdoor. And, well, the adjustment here is a little more difficult to get to, so I had to put 170 to get something a little better than, you know, 120, right? That's where it drops down to after this point. And so I see some pretty high paying jobs. An engineering architect from Microsoft Corporation starts at 159, gets 204,000. That's great. Except it's not, again, a primary COBOL programming position. 
There's a lot of Azure cloud responsibilities and mainframe AS4 migration is successful, right? When you look at the actual must-have skills, there's a lot of things in here that aren't COBOL. C Sharp, C++ plus coding, um, JCL, Assembler. These are not just programming languages uh, that would be really associated with COBOL, right? Now, a lot of people have experience with COBOL don't have it with x86 architecture. It really depends on when you had your COBOL training, but this is something that not everyone's going to have, very specific, right? Not that you couldn't be trained, and the language is pretty much the same from platform to platform, but it's kind of odd when you see these jobs here. This one looks a lot more promising, 269,000 to 285,000, right? But again, this is a Glassdoor estimate. This isn't really the actual pay for this job, and when you look further into it, You've got requirements of, again, three to seven years experience in software development and support using COBOL, JCL, CICS, and relational database management databases, right? And experience with agile methodology using Scrum. So again, these are skills that people can have in 2020 for sure. But for a COBOL programmer that they're in desperate need of, I would think that they would be a little less picky for what they were looking for or have some jobs that are offering training, or more than 12 total COBOL jobs in the United States. But again, let's go down. Senior manager, technical lead, right? When you go down this list, these are not just programmer jobs. These are jobs with other responsibilities, direct, technical director, software architect, senior mainframe modernization architect, a position specifically made to get rid of your job that you're working in. Your job is to get rid of mainframes and COBOL, right? And so you get on the list and you read some of these descriptions a little further, like Senior Engineering Architect for Microsoft. Sounds great when you realize that it's not a COBOL position. Again, people soft, right? And there's just so many of these jobs that really aren't COBOL. And there's only 12 jobs around the country, according to Glassdoor, that are in the decent price range, right? And again, that depends on where they're located, if that's a decent salary or not. So let's go to LinkedIn, right? And let's do some comparisons here because every one of these sites doesn't really have the same methods of searching, right? I had to enter 150 grand on Indeed, put a minimum of 170 on Glassdoor because I didn't want to go drop down to 120. And, and this job uh, for LinkedIn.com, COBOL search across the United States, I get 131 results, which sounds much more promising, but I had to put a minimum of 120 in because in LinkedIn will not allow me to go higher than that. And you can check it up yourself, right? That's what they'll do. Um, it doesn't sound like people are too desperate if the uh, pay rates are as low as these are for these positions, right? And there's 131 results and you start going to a list again, you're looking at IT manager, systems engineer, senior scientist. Now, a lot of these things are not pro COBOL programming positions. And you can go through the list on your own. I, was, I would suggest you do if you're still interested in COBOL after this conversation. But to give you a comparison of what desperate need really means, let's take a look at a similar search on Indeed. Uh, sorry, LinkedIn.com. 131 results for COBOL at 120 grand plus versus how many jobs could you find for, I don't know, let's just say Java with a similar search. And Java is a very interesting language, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, some languages are doing really well right now. They do have desperate needs. And you'll see Java is one of those. The same pay range across the United States, there are 15,239 results that require or mention Java compared to 131 that mentioned COBOL. And most of the COBOL positions are not asking you to do COBOL programming. That may just be a listing of something in the description that you're a manager of COBOL programmers, or there was a piece of COBOL code written 50 years ago, and if you need to look at it, you may have to restart a service or something, but really not actual programming for COBOL jobs, right? I'm certain the vice president of technology is probably not going to be too much job at programming as well. So it's just a way to kind of gauge the interest in a language. But a better way to gauge interest in languages is to check uh, what IBM is actually looking for, right? 
So I went out to IBM's link in the open mainframe project where all of these jobs are going to be posted and where they're asking for volunteers to do COBOL programming and took a little uh, look around at what they had. And what I was confused to find out was when I found the job section, there were a total of two postings, one for a mainframe test engineer, and one was a post for someone that said, how can I transition to mainframe development? So mainframe test engineers amounted to 475 views of the one job open on the website that's been referenced from all these articles about we're desperately needing of programmers. And it's for a test engineer job. That's not really a programming position. It's one position. But as you can see, 13,000 people have viewed the calling all COBOL programmers category. And a lot of people have come through here. And you can see that there's people with 20 years of COBOL experience, DB2, CICS, all sorts of things that Honestly, I'm not entirely familiar with myself because I did not pursue a career in Fortran or COBOL. I understood the language, but I haven't touched it in so many years. I wouldn't know much about JCL or job control language these days, right? Um, it's just been 20 years ago, but some people have pursued those types of things. You see 30 plus years of IBM mainframe systems, right? And to give you a perspective, you can come through here and you can look and see there's a lot of qualified people out there. In fact, if you go by the number of posts, somewhere around 1,237 people have posted their qualifications for the one job that's available for a test engineer for COBOL. Uh, so how do you know if a language is in desperate need of programmers? How do you know um, if you should learn a language like COBOL, right? Well, one way I like to gauge what skills I should be getting is going to Indeed and going to LinkedIn and Glassdoor and other sites, uh, Dice.com, right? And doing a survey. Type in the language and see what jobs come up. The number of jobs, where they're located, and how much they pay. I mean, if it's in desperate need, you're going to be seeing a $200,000 plus job easily. And if you don't see any of those, or you see one or two of those, that doesn't sound like there's much of a desperate need, does there? So in the list of top, you know, 50 programming languages out there, and this is a decent site for looking at programming languages, there's tons of them out there that give different rankings and they're based off of all sorts of different factors. But in the list, you might want to ask yourself, where exactly is COBOL? I mean, I see some familiar ones at the top here, Java, C, Python, and I know there's plenty of jobs for those. I get called about them periodically, right? JavaScript, PHP, SQL, and some of these things are not really in demand, as much in demand today, where they're getting a little bit more demand, like assembly language, but it's still number 14 on the list. Even Perl, I'm a great Perl programmer. I love Perl, um, but it's pretty fairly down the list. So where does COBOL fall in all this, right? Where is its popularity at? How many people can program in it? Um, how many jobs are there out there for it? Well, you find COBOL here at number 26 just below D and right above Rust. And when you start looking a little further down the list and around the people in other programming languages that are around COBOL, you go down to 34 and you find my friend Fortran and realize that, yes, 20-something years ago, almost 20 years ago now, I made the right decision in not taking a $250 an hour job for Fortran that was going to last three months. Because after the three months, there was no guarantee. Once once the program was done, once the project moved all of its programming off of Fortran, there won't be any more opportunities. And the same thing can be said about COBOL. There is no desperate need. If there was a desperate need, we live in a free market economy, and you would totally see a quarter million dollars being paid for a programming language that no one had any knowledge in anymore, if there was really a desperate need. 